Projectile motion is a particle in free flight only the under the influence of gravity. Examples of this are throwing balls, cannons launched, Uh, bullets shot from a gun can be treated as projectiles. Um, spitting off a bridge. Pretty much any small um, object or an object where our size doesn't matter. You pretty much simplify it, treat it as a projectile. It gets launched at an initial velocity flies through space, and then it lands somewhere. Now, projectile motion follows two special cases for velocity and acceleration. So, we draw x-axis, y-axis. Okay, so then the particle launches with some initial speed the initial at some angle, theta. Flies through the air and lands. And then the only thing acting here is gravity, which acts down. So in the x direction, there is no acceleration because gravity points only in the y. So the x direction is constant. Speed. The y direction, we have gravity, which is a constant, but gravity is an acceleration. Actual value of G on Earth equals 9.81 meters per second squared, or English units 32.2 feet per second squared. So if we want to know how far a particle has gone or how high it goes, we need to use some of those fundamental differentiable relationships. So we started out, um, we remember from last time, we have V equals ds dt, A equals d squared s dt squared equals dv, ds, sorry, dt equals v, dv, ds. Now, because gravity acts only in the y direction, and there's no acceleration acting in the x direction, then we can decouple these axes, okay? So, we can calculate for the x direction separately from the y direction, and then we don't have to use it as a the motion as a vector, we can break it up into the, the two scalars. So here, we want to calculate for the x direction. So we know that x has constant speed, so v is a constant. It is not a function of time in the x direction. So we can use this relationship for x being constant speed. So we know v in the x direction equals dx dt. Okay, now 
to find V in the X direction, we have to break up this initial velocity into components. So we'll do that over here, Vx equals V cosine theta, Vy equals V sine theta. Okay, because the Y is the sine, and then the X part is the cosine. So we'll have that's the X, the Y. Now back to here, we just need to separate and integrate. So V, this actually is going to be the initial because the initial was the initial velocity. So V initial cosine theta dt equals dx. Integrate. So time goes from zero to t and x is going to go from x initial, which is usually zero, to x. So we do this integration, v0 cos theta times t equals x minus x initial. So if we rearrange, then we know x initial plus v initial cosine theta times t equals x. So this is true for anything with constant velocity. Now in the y direction, we have constant acceleration. The acceleration in the y direction is just gravity. So we can use this relationship to find y. Well, we know that if a equals d squared s dt squared. Then we get integrate twice. So we can start with v. We'll need to get an expression for the y velocity. First, so we do a which a in the y direction is negative g, because g points down. Negative g equals dv dt. This is dvy. Then we separate negative g dt equals d dy. So then if we integrate from zero to t, from vy initial, which is v initial sine theta, v initial sine theta to vy final, then we get negative g t equals v y minus v initial sine theta. So then if we rearrange v initial sine theta minus g t equals v y. 
So this gives us velocity in the y direction. Remember the x velocity doesn't change because there is no acceleration in the x direction, but the y velocity will change. So if it starts here, y will have a max velocity, then up at the peak, the y velocity is gonna be shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until suddenly up here, it's no longer moving in the y direction. It's, it's, that's its maximum height, and then it starts going down. So then the y velocity becomes negative. So the y velocity changes, the x velocity does not change, but the total velocity will, because total velocity is comprised of x velocity, y velocity, y velocity changes, total velocity will change. So then we integrate this again to get y position, then we'll have we use V equals VY equals DY VT. So VY, which is that V initial sine theta minus gt dt equals dy. So we integrate from y initial to y, and we integrate from zero to t, and we get v initial sine theta times t minus one half g t squared equals y minus y initial. So rearrange y initial plus v initial sine theta t minus one half g t squared equals y. So these are three really important equations. So the x will tell you how far you've gone, the y will tell you how high you are, and the y velocity will tell you what is your speed in the y direction. And you can use that to find your total speed. But what do all of these equations have in common that you need to know? Well, they all have the initial, they all have theta, and they all have t. Now, v initial and theta, you can measure, right? Because you can control your initial velocity, you can control the initial angle, but time is something that you can't just choose. You have to actually know and measure, like be tracking what time is because time changes. So what if you don't have T? Can you calculate anything without knowing T? Turns out you can, because there's one more of these relationships that we haven't used yet. Now in the x direction, you need to know t because there is no acceleration in the x. So if you don't know t, you're screwed. But in the y direction, you can use this other relationship, v dv ds. And you can use, because t is gonna be the same for the x and the y, then you can, once you figure out t using the y equations, you can plug it into the x equation or vice versa. So all of these common variables can be solved out for and plugged into the other equation to give the stuff you need. We know that a in the y direction, a is gonna be v dv ds, but 
in projectile motion, minus g equals dy dv dy. So we separate negative g dy equals dy dv integrate from y initial to y, v initial, v y initial, which is v zero sine theta to v y final. And then that gives negative g times y minus y initial equals one half v y squared minus v initial squared sine squared theta. So rearranging then we get v y squared equals v initial squared sine squared theta minus 2g times y minus y initial. This is the fourth important equation for projectile motion.